welcome to the stage Dr. Esther Singer, Director of Product and Market Development at Twist Bioscience. Thanks everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Esther Singer and today I'll be talking about how we at Twist are driving the data storage revolution by synthesizing DNA. This is actually the first ever picture taken of Earth as seen from the lunar orbit. Um, it was taken in 1966, and as you can see, it's quite damaged. And it's damaged because the tape um, that this image was, image was stored on lost its magnetization. Just like tape, hard drives, solid-state drives, flash, every current traditional storage media that we're using only lasts for a few years before it degrades. And what that means is you have to keep copying your data onto new storage devices in order to keep it safe. Um, so you're constantly at a, at a risk for data loss, as with this important moment in history. DNA um, doesn't really have that problem as long as you keep it away from UV light, oxidation, and high temperatures, higher than 40 degrees C. In fact, the oldest animal DNA we've ever retrieved from a mammoth tooth that was buried in the Siberian permafrost is older than a million years old. So DNA isn't only good for storing data, it's actually good for preserving data for the ages. And the way we make sure that it stays stable is we actually put it into these little steel capsules over here. And just like Hyunjin, if you work in DNA, you have to bring your little storage device on stage. This is a, a steel capsule. It's hermetically sealed, and it basically requires very little power to store. Now, on the left side, you see a plate with 96 of these little steel capsules. And on the right side, you see the current tape uh, version LT09. The relative sizes um, are about accurate. And you can see that with very little effort, if you put 10 terabytes into each uh, capsule, we can easily achieve 20 to 50 x higher density of data storage in DNA versus, versus tape. And because it's so compact, it's also portable. And you don't really need a ginormous data center to, to store it safely. You could keep it in your basement or any other location that you would like. Now, because it requires little power, um, that's, that's a very ener energy friendly use um, and how to store data. Currently, all the data centers in the US combined is uh, roughly less than 3,000, require 5,000 megawatts a day. In comparison, the country of Hungary, um, on a good day, can produce roughly 7,000 megawatts a day. So it's an enormous energy demand that these data st uh, storage centers pose. Um, and that's not only to keep all these lights blinking for all these racks and to keep uh, all these devices operative, but also because of the environmental control that tape and drives need. And that includes temperature control and, more importantly, humidity control. DNA doesn't have uh, those demands, especially if you store them in, in our hermetically sealed capsules. Um, and so not only would you save in, in footprint um, and, and thereby reduce your rent, but in general, your operational cost would, would really uh, decrease quite significantly. We see application in phase one for, for the storage technology in market sectors that have a demand to store data for a long amount of time. So that's the medical sector, x-rays, uh, that's the financial sector, legal documents you oftentimes want to keep for a long time. Satellite images are actually never thrown away, and uh, the better our resolution, our imagery uh, becomes, the, the more data each image um, will produce. Um, last but not least, the arts, media, and entertainment industry uh, wants to preserve our culture for generations to come. And that's an example of, all of these are examples of data that you write once and you may never want to edit them, but you keep writing to them and you access them either rarely or, or never. If you're part of the government, um, I'm sure no matter what branch, you have data from decades, if not centuries, in your archives. 
and uh, you have no desire to lose any of those. Many of those data records are not saved even electronically, but on paper documents. So DNA would be a great choice for you. Data storage really requires three things. It's write, store, and read. And so I brought a little video to showcase how we actually store data in DNA. And the video is not playing. <laughs> Can, uh, can we play the video or? Perfect. Thank you. Um, so digital data consists of zeros and ones. That's what your computer sees. We can turn those zeros and ones into the components of DNA, A, G, C, T, and you can come up with a codec that translates one to another. Once you've determined what DNA sequence your underlying image actually would look like, you can synthesize that on, on a DNA synthesizing machine, store it away so it lasts for a long time, and really read it back at your leisure. Um, and, and what you would get back on your computer screen would be, again, zeros and ones. So it's a perfect translation with 100% data retrieval guarantees. Storing, I showed you the capsule. Um, you as a user can actually determine how many terabytes you would like to have in a capsule. And the possibilities are endless. Really, in that volume, you could store many, many petabytes. Um, copies, as Hyunjin also mentioned, are extremely fast and cheap. Everyone since COVID has heard of PCR. It's an enzyme-based uh, reaction that can generate millions of copies in, in very short amount of time. Reading, DNA sequencing is ubiquitous in the world and it will remain uh, important to keep this technology around as long as humanity is around. There's, def uh, there's a number of different sequencing technologies out there and uh, no matter who writes your DNA, uh, you can take your DNA to anyone and read it back. Uh, since 2010, luckily this technology has seen major increases in capacity and major decreases in cost and this trend we see continuing such that writing as well as reading will be cost effective for large amounts of data. Why is TWIST leading the DNA data storage revolution? It's because we think of scale. We don't only want to develop a technology that's cool, we are product oriented and we want this to arrive at a consumer in wherever you want to keep your data safe in a data storage center in, in your basement. What we've done so far is we've taken DNA synthesis from a traditional method as it was in 96 wells, uh, having 96 strands synthesized in parallel to a silicon surface, because we're in Silicon Valley, where we have one million individual spots at which we can grow DNA strands uh, at the same time, unique DNA strands, that is. And that would uh, sort of reflect a megabyte, megabyte scale. We have since then increased that capacity to over 100 million spots on our latest CMOS chip design. And we're headed towards the terabyte scale, which will be available for early access in 2025. And with that, um, until we're, we have this terabyte scale available, I would invite you to think about what you would store in DNA. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.